On the 17th of September 1176 took place the Battle of Miriokefalon between the Byzantine Empire and the Seljuk Turks in Phrygia near Lake Beşehir in present southwestern Turkey. The battle is famous because it was the last attempt by the Byzantines to recover the interior of Anatolia from the Seljuk Turks. In a few years, following the Battle of Manzikert in 1071, the Byzantine Empire lost almost all of Anatolia in favor of the Seljuk Turks. In 1095, the Byzantine Emperor asked the Crusaders for help in fighting the Seljuk Turks and after their arrival, the Byzantines managed to regain some of the lost territory. A series of Byzantine campaigns against the Seljuk Turks of the Sultanate of Rome between 1158 and 1161 resulted in a treaty favorable to the Empire with the Sultan acknowledging a form of subordination to the Byzantine Emperor. The Seljuk Sultan Kilij Arslan II visited Constantinople shortly after the peace was signed and Emperor Manuel I Komnenos treated him as both an honored guest and an imperial vassal. For many years after this event, there was no open hostility between these two powers. However, it was a fragile peace, because the Seljuks wanted to push from Asia Minor's arid central plateau to the more fertile coastal lands, while the Byzantines wanted to reclaim the interior Anatolian territory lost a century earlier in the Battle of Manzikert. Manuel was able to concentrate his military power in other theaters during the long peace with the Seljuks. He defeated Hungary in the west and established Byzantine control over the Balkans. He also reclaimed Cilicia from local Armenian dynasties in the east and reduced the Crusader Principality of Antioch to vassal status. Meanwhile, Kilij Arslan II was able to eliminate internal rivals and strengthen his military resources during the peace with the Byzantines. He expelled his brother Shahin Shah from the lands near Ankara and destroyed the Denshiment Emirate of Eastern Anatolia. Kilij Arslan refused to hand over to the Byzantines, as it was required by treaty, a significant portion of the territory he had recently conquered from the Danishment Emirate, and the peace between Byzantium and the Sultanate of Rome collapsed in 1175. Manuel gathered a 30,000 man strong army and marched towards the border with the Seljuks at Laodicea. Arslan tried to negotiate, but Manuel was convinced of his superiority and rejected the new peace. He sent part of the army under Andronikos Vatatses towards Amasia, while his larger force marched towards the Seljuk capital at Iconium. The smaller Byzantine force moving towards Amasia was destroyed in an ambush and Andronikos Vatatses was killed. For the Byzantines, advancing through the dry plateau of Phrygia in the middle of summer was very difficult. The Turks also destroyed crops and poisoned the water supply to make Manuel's march even more difficult. In mid-September, Manuel's army reached a mountain pass near Miriokefalon fortress. Forced by the lack of water and food for the soldiers, Manuel decided to cross the mountain pass with the army to shorten the road, even if there was a risk of an ambush by the Turks. He didn't know that on the higher ground, dominating the mountain pass, was Kilij Arslan with about 10,000 Turkish soldiers waiting for them. The Byzantine vanguard was the first to encounter Arslan's troops and went through the pass with few casualties, as did the main division. These divisions sent their infantry uphill to dislodge the Seljuk soldiers, who were forced to retreat to higher ground. The following divisions did not take this precaution and did not deploy their archers effectively. After the Byzantine rear entered into the pass, the Turks trapped them. The Turkish attack, descending from the heights, 
fell especially hard on the Byzantine right wing, which suffered the greatest losses. The Turks then concentrated their attacks on the baggage and siege trains, shooting down the drought animals and choking the roadway. The left division also suffered significant losses. The other Byzantine troops were panicked by the massacre in front of them, and the sudden descent of a blinding dust storm did nothing to improve the morale or organization of Byzantine forces. The Byzantine Emperor restored discipline with difficulty and organized his forces into a defensive formation, which eventually managed to get out of the pass and reunite with the vanguard. Meanwhile, the vanguard troops and the main divisions had built a fortified camp. The night was spent in successfully repulsing further attacks by Seljuk mounted archers. Emperor Manuel was tempted to abandon his troops only to realize that he would be in much greater danger by fleeing than if he remained in the midst of his army. The next day, the Turks surrounded the camp firing arrows and Manuel ordered two counterattacks, but the fighting calmed down. The Byzantine army lost a quarter of its soldiers, as well as the siege equipment. The Byzantines, without any means of attacking Iconium, we are no longer in a position to continue the campaign. Also, the Seljuk Sultan was keen for peace to be restored as soon as possible. He sent an envoy together with gifts to Manuel in order to negotiate the truce. As a result of these negotiations, the Byzantine army was to be allowed to retreat on condition that Manuel destroy his forts at Dorileum and Subleum on the Byzantine Seljuk border. However, the retreat of the Byzantine army was harassed by the attacks of Turkoman tribesmen, over whom Kilij Arslan probably had very little control. This gave Manuel an excuse to avoid complying with the conditions of this new arrangement in their entirety. He therefore demolished the fortifications of the less important fortress of Subleum, but left Dorileum intact. Despite being a significant defeat for the Byzantines, Miriokephalon had no significant impact on the Byzantine army's capabilities. This is underlined by the notable victory the Byzantines won over the Seljuks at Helion and Leymocher on the Manda River the following year. The defeat at Miriokephalon marked the end of Byzantine attempts to recover the Anatolian plateau, which was now lost to the Empire forever. After Manuel's death, the Byzantine Empire drifted into anarchy and it was never again in a position to mount a major offensive in Anatolia. <laughs>